Good morning. Good morning. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. I pray that you are having a blessed day in the Lord. Give him praise and give him honor. Hallelujah to his name. I say give him praise and give him honor. Today is the second day of the 14 day full liquid fast. Um, Our Bible study today is going to be processed versus premature. Um, God was saying that too many people go out before their time. That's why y'all seeing so much chaos, so much, um, Um, They're not processed. And I am definitely a prime example of that. God didn't release me to to the prophetic till I was, what, 40-something? I don't remember their certain age, but I know it was I was in my 40s. Now, you have to understand something. I had been ordained in Manny, Louisiana at 27 years old as a youth minister. I'm going somewhere with this. But God didn't release me before the public till I was 40. I mean, yes, I was technically before the public at 27, but I was still a babe in Christ, still making mistakes, still doing this, the process. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. I need y'all to write process versus premature. So I'm going to walk this thing out. Good morning. God bless you. God keep you. All right. So I, w- I want to go ahead and do some um, definitions right now. Okay. So the first one, well, first I want to start with a scripture. Proverbs 19, 2. I'm going to walk this thing out. Remember, it's not preaching, it's teaching. Come on, somebody. Proverbs 19, 2 says, Also that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. And he that hasteth with his feet, sin it. I'm going to read that one again. Proverbs 19, 2, King James Version says, Also that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. And he that hasteth with feet, sin it. So right then and there, that's letting you know, don't be rushing things. And you know, when you're young or not even young, when you're excited, when you're excited about God, you want to go tell everybody you want to do this. You want to do that. You still have to count the cost. You have to understand that wisdom. So I'm going to walk this thing out. So bear with me. So now we want to talk about process. What does process mean? The definition is an adjective. It says occurring or done before. Uh, I'm sorry. This is premature. The, the first one is premature. It says occurring or done before the usual or proper time too early. I'm going to read that one again. It's called premature definition of premature occurring or done before the usual or proper time too early. Now I'm going to read process, which is a noun. It says a series of actions or step taking in order to achieve a particular end. And also it has a second definition. It's called law. Believe it or not. Can you believe that? The process is called law. A summons or right requiring a person to appear in court. But you and I both know. Notice they call it process. Now I want to read another scripture. Galatians 5.17 says, For the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. You cannot do the things that you would if you walk in the flesh. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And that was the word of God. So let me go ahead and break this thing out. Process versus premature. That's why y'all seen so many people fall. You know, when I was um, young, I was 27 years old. I just got ordained at New Jerusalem Baptist Church in Manor, Louisiana as a youth minister. And I remember I wanted to just go and I was going to take the world by storm and it was my pastor, Pastor Clovis Rogers. He said, Deanna, you got to slow it down. He said, yes, you are anointed. Yes, you're appointed. He said, but you don't know protocol. Mm, I'm going somewhere. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. He said, you don't know process. Oh, come on, somebody. He said, you don't know how to stand. Oh, come on, somebody. He said, you don't know warfare. Oh, come on, somebody. He said, you don't know how to be quiet. Mm, I just said something. You see, when you're in the world, anything goes. You talk how you want, you walk how you want, you curse how you want, you live how you want. But when you come into kingdom principle, come on somebody, I'm going, so I'm going to walk this thing out. It's a different way. You can't do what you want to do. And we got these people, young and old, trying to do what they want to do and now not abide their Christ in a mess. Yes, yes, y'all know it's true. We're in a mess because now you got competition, you got entertainment. You got, everybody's trying to outdo the next person. Now you don't have no unity. Now you don't have to wear, you can't even tell nobody nothing without them getting offended. Come on somebody, because they don't know wisdom and discernment versus I'm going to run fast. And then when people really don't ordain y'all quick enough, then you go to the internet. Well, I'm going to just get a little thing off the internet. 
Well, you ain't got no training. So you got to understand the process versus mature. When a baby's born too soon, don't they have the complications? They do, don't they? Well, that's the same thing in the body of Christ. How can you really be effective if you're not processed? You got to learn how to speak. Learn how to flow in wisdom. Learn about the anointing of God. Learn how God processes. Learn how God anoints. Learn how God appoints. And you got to learn to grow with God. Come on, somebody. I'm going to walk this thing through. I got a um, sharp Bible study. Hold on. Let me walk this thing through. I'm trying to get something. Hold on, you guys. All right. Okay, so let me tell you who did that, who went through the process in the Bible. No, actually, he didn't go through the process. Just one moment, you guys. All righty. All right, getting situated here because I don't want my stuff to fall. All right, so we're going to read St. Luke. We're going to read chapter 15, and we're going to start at verse 11. Yeah, I'm talking about the prodigal son. Y'all going to get it in a minute. And he said, a certain man had two sons, verse 12. And the younger of them said to his father, father, give me my portion of goods that fell to me. And he divided unto him his living. Verse 13. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey to a far country and there wasted his substance with riderous living. I'm going to read that one again. I'm in Luke, Luke 15, verse 13. And not many days after the younger son gathered together and took his journey to a far country and there wasted his substance and riderous living. Let me tell you something. When you're not processed and you're premature, the devil will eat you up and spit you out. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is because you don't know what you're doing. Oh, come on, somebody. Let me continue reading. I feel the power of God up in here. Verse 14. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want. You understand what the enemy does? The enemy will try. He knows he, he knows that you don't have what it takes that you're unprocessed so he will fool you out of your stuff why do some of you get ripped off come on somebody even in the ministry because guess what you're not processed oh let me let me walk this thing let me finish reading this verse 15 and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country then y'all be joining with anybody didn't even ask god who they were you're supposed to ask god god who is this before me show me their spirit People could, oh man, they got so much good game these days. The tongue, the tongue. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Let me continue. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. They don't even recognize who you are. Don't you understand when you're not processed, the enemy will put you in a position that God never called you to because God calls you as a king and a queen. God calls you royalty. Let me continue. Verse 16. And he would faint having filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him. Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. Verse 17. And when he came to himself, oh, hallelujah. That's where it get good. And when he come to himself, because one day you're going to come to yourself. You see, one thing I've learned, even in my teaching, my preaching and my reaching I used to oh God I used to because I'm very um I love pe the people of God so when you love the people of God you really want to see everybody do well so when people used to go astray and do bad things or whatever or I saw them going in a way that they shouldn't go I used to get so upset I said oh my God they're going in the wrong way and I get upset God said Deanna you all you got to do is pray for them he said because one day they're going to come to themselves I said something oh let me continue how many hard servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare and I perish with hunger. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. All right. So let me read verse 18. I will rise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Notice what he said. Praise God. Praise God. And 19, and no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of the hired servants. Verse 20, and he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had a compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And he said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and is thy sight. I am no longer worthy to be called thy son. Verse 22, but the father said to him, to his servants, he said, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put on a ring on his hand and his shoes and his feet. Verse 23, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be married. Verse 24, for this is my son was dead and is not alive. He was lost and is not found and they begin to be married. But I want to talk to you. I want to go a little further. 
25. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came to drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. Verse 26. And he called one of the servants and asked what this means. And he said unto him, verse 27, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatty calf because he had received him safe and sound. Verse 28. And he was angry and would not go, and therefore came his father out and entreated him and said, verse 29. And he answered, said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve you, and neither transgressed I at any time, or the commandment, and yet thou never gave me a kid, I might make merry with my friends. 30. But as soon as thy son was come, which had devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted cow. Verse 31. And he said unto him, Thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. 32. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost, and now he's found. So that was the word of God, and that was Luke 15 to 32, and it's called the prodigal son. So I want to preach to you this morning. So notice there's three variables up in here. Number one, he wanted, he wanted all his stuff. Y'all don't want to waste some time. God, just give it to me now. God, give it to me now. You can't handle that warfare. Oh, come on, somebody. I feel a part of the Holy Ghost. Do y'all remember Jack Nicholson when just, just that little one line that made him famous? Tom Cruise asked him, tell me the truth. He said, you can't handle the truth. Can I tell you the truth? Y'all can't handle them demons. You might as well just wait and get processed because I'm telling you what I know. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I know this word backwards and forwards forwards and backwards but i did not know spiritual warfare at one time and i'm gonna tell you right now it caused me to make mistakes it caused me to hurt people y'all ain't ready for me because when that warfare come it's gonna do two things it's gonna back you up or it's gonna make you go to your knees now you gotta understand what i'm saying back you up to say man i don't want to do this or go to your knees and say god help me i didn't know when i was young to say god help me i'm thinking i could do this in the flesh like most of you do you see, you can't operate the way you did out there in the kingdom of God. Come on, somebody. I'm going to walk this thing out. And that's what most of you are trying to do. Most of you have nasty attitudes like your head out there. Most of you have bullying spirits like your head out there. Most of you don't have compassion. No compassion like you had out there. You can't come into the kingdom of God with that same stuff that you had when you were in the world. This is where you got to go to God and say, God, how do I treat my brother? How do I treat my sister? How do I process God and keep me in the process, God, keep me still. Oh, there it is right there. You got to ask God, to keep your mind still, your body still. Because one thing when you're in the process, you, it, it's just like being in trouble. Everybody has gotten in trouble before, right? Come on, somebody, whether on your job or even with God or even just in the physical. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So let me tell you something. Soon as you get in trouble, what happens? You try to look for a way out. You look for a release, right? Well, in the kingdom of God, the only release is God. And to be honest with you, there are some times that God will not give you a release because God wants you to grow to what you're going through. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Sometimes y'all just look for a release. I'm just going to run from it or I'm just not going to deal with it. That is not possible in the kingdom of God. God will allow so much pressure to come up on you because guess what? He wants to know how can you handle that pressure? I see you asking for an appointment. I, I see you asking for this. I see you asking for a promotion. I see you asking to be anointed. I see you asking to be healed. I see you asking to be delivered. But what would I require of you? Can you handle what I'm asking you to do? Because to be honest with you, most 95% of Christians, you are, you out of the race right there just with your attitude. How do you go through when you get upset? Come on, talk to me, somebody. How do you go through when you get upset? Don't lie. Don't lie. Don't play games this morning. Tell the truth. When something hits you to the core of your spirit that you don't like, maybe a loss of a job, even death or death of a marriage. And I rebuke all that, but we're just talking about examples. How do you spell relief? Do you, do you go out fornicating? Do you start drinking? Do you start cussing? Do you start acting like you did in the world? Throw a tension tantrum thinking, okay, well, I'm gonna get my way one way or another, or it's my way or the highway. Or do you truly start fasting and praying? It is so important. And I know a lot of people don't understand this, but it does. It is so important to let God take you through the process versus being mature. So many people have lost their calling, their lives, even their livelihood going out there too quickly because here's the deal it's like the seven sons of Sceva Paul I know Jesus I know but who are you we don't know you 
You got to understand you are fighting a supernatural force. I'm going to say that again. The devil and his imps, that's supernatural. Oh, come on, somebody. Let's go a little deeper because I, I, I feel like somebody pulling on me. Hold on. Let's go a little deeper. We're going to go. Hold on. Hold on. We got to go a little deeper because I don't think y'all understand how deep this stuff is this morning. And you know all the subjects that I'm speaking about that God gave it to me. I don't just... He said, Deanna, he said, too many, they want it so fast. He said, I appreciate them loving me. I appreciate them wanting to serve me. He said, but what's the difference if you can't stand before me? What's the difference if you can't stand before the enemy? Come on, somebody, I just said something. What is the difference if you have all the knowledge, all the wisdom, all the money, all this, and you can't take warfare? That's why y'all not here in the, in the churches. Come on, somebody. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. I don't care how big your church is. I don't care how famous your pastor is. If people are not getting healed and delivered, then y'all are just having a gathering. Y'all might as well just throw some food in and have a barbecue. Yeah, I just said it how I said it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So let me, I'm in Ephesians 6, and I'm going to start with verse 10. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. There it is right there. I don't care how much money you have. Like I said, I don't care how much people you have. You can have 10,000 people in your congregation. Don't you understand if you're not teaching them that they wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against, against rulers of the darkness of this world. It's about spiritual warfare. Let me tell you something. Go ahead and let God process you. What is the process? Getting wisdom, getting knowledge. Come on, somebody learning. Oh man, I got to go here this morning. I am 51 years old. I started um, when I was 27, like I said, I was youth minister, um, minister. I was ordained in Manny, Louisiana. I have not stopped learning. I get in my word. I, I, I'm telling you, I mean, I get in that word. I dissect it. I let the Holy Ghost teach me. I let the Holy Ghost lead me to who to listen to on YouTube. Unfortunately, most of the people I listen to, I told y'all are dead. I will always listen to my mentor, Dr. Um, Miles Monroe, that man is still pouring into my life. Oh, I'm going somewhere. Let me tell you something. It's a difference between being popular and influential. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm about to preach to you for real. Oh, y'all going to catch this for the real ones. You see, pop popularity, it comes from the root word population. So population means what people. So if the people like you, King Saul, then I guess you good. But one day you're going to die without honor. But if you influence you, that means that God has something on your name. Oh, come on, somebody. Y'all ain't ready for me this morning. You see, it's difference between being popular and influential. How many people are you touching their lives by telling the truth, preaching the truth, living the truth? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You see, when you just popular, you, whatever the people want, that's what you're going to do, King Saul. I just said something. I just, I just, I just gave y'all something that if you catch hold of that, you will make it in this life as a Christian, like never before. Come on, somebody walking like God, talking like God, being like God, because notice Jesus Christ made himself of no reputation. You know why he didn't have to, because what his works had did it. That's the influence part. You want to be somebody of influence. You don't want to just be popular because here's the day. Oh, I'm about to get you. Let me tell you how the world works and y'all know it's the truth. What's popular today may not be popular tomorrow. I just said something. But when you are influential, come on somebody, when God has his hand on your life, you could be dead and your words will still be powerful and penetrating. I just said something. I just said something. So you got to make up your mind. What you going to do? You going to go through the process or you going to go out there premature talking about, I just want that money. I just want that bag. I just want to be known. And that's what our children are doing. That's what the youth are doing. That's what people are doing. You got people I'm talking about living any kind of way just to be popular. Oh, come on. You're on TV, the housewives, the this wives, the reality show, all this stuff, power. Y'all know and y'all love to have it. So let me ask you something. You know how you know who you are? What you put into your spirit. Oh, I'm going here today. You're not going to like me because I'm going to tell the truth about this process versus premature. What do you put in your spirit from day to day? Do you read books? Do you study the word of God? Or do you look at TV for five hours and get on the phone and, and gossip or get on Facebook? Oh, power was the stuff. What, what are you feeding your soul, your spirit? And you wonder why you confused, hurt, bothered and everything else, which I rebuke in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's what you putting in your spirit. That's why your life is like it is. I'm just going to tell 
tell the truth because ain't nobody want to tell it to y'all. You and then you want to the oh, whole I feel the power of God I'm about to go off. Let me tell y'all something. Then you go on Facebook and any other book looking for a prophet to tell you the word of God. Well, you wouldn't need a word if you were getting your word. Come on, somebody. I said it. If you were getting your word, you wouldn't need a word from everybody looking for everybody. That's how y'all getting food. You're supposed to get close to God for yourself. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And when a prophet come and tell you something, that should already be confirmation because God didn't already told you. That's what's going on. Everybody looking for a word. God said, I am the word. Look for me. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody. I feel the power of God. Y'all got to understand. Because let me tell you something about the devil. When your body, when your flesh wants something, you lie to yourself and justify it. Oh, come on, somebody. Let me say that again. When your body wants something, your flesh wants something, you lie to yourself to get it. You lie to yourself to keep it. Oh, I just said something. You see, your flesh wants you to fail, God says. He says, but by my spirit, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, I'll keep you if you stay in the process. If you let me grow you up, if you let me mature you. Oh, notice the difference. Premature and true and mature. Process. Go through the process, said the Lord. Because let me tell you what the devil doing, God says. The devil is disguising education as wisdom. Oh! Y'all ain't ready for me. And I'm not saying I'm not against education, but you got to understand the best educator is the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost going to tell you the most. You don't hear what I'm saying. He going to tell you which way to go, which way not to go, what to do, what not to do. And this is how people go before their time because they're not listening to the Holy Ghost. You go because you're listening to so-and-so or this man or that man. When you start maturing for real, you go to God. You wake up with God. You go to bed with God. You, you consult God on everything and everyone. That's how I live my life, people. I'm telling you the truth. You can ask anybody that's close to me. I don't care how much I love you. I might talk to you, but your word means nothing without God confirming it. Oh, I just said something. Come on, somebody. And, and that's another thing. You must have a desire to be healed and delivered, God says. A lot of you don't have a desire to be healed and delivered. Some of you like doing, oh, I'm going there. Some of you like looking at porn. Some of you like looking at these TV shows. Y'all get mad because somebody talk about them shows too. Y'all love listening to that music. What type of music are you listening to, God says? Oh, come on, somebody. I didn't stepped on some toes. Don't worry. Just say, ouch. What are you putting into your spirit? Because I'm going to be honest with you. Y'all wondering why this world is topsy-turvy? Because y'all like a spirit of entertainment. Y'all love to be entertained. and Y'all love to have it so. You will always know. Who a person is by what they allow in their lives, what they're listening to, what they're doing, where they're going. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So you have to understand it's a difference between process and premature. It's a difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of darkness is all over. Let me tell you something. Somebody was talking to me this morning. That Internet. That's taking people to hell. You can say what you want to say. I use it for good. And, I, and to be honest with you, I get on there and I get off. I don't stay on there. Oh, the devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. I, I hit and I go. Because let me tell you something. It got people dressing a certain way. I'm going here. I'm not preaching. I'm teaching. Dressing a certain way. Acting a certain way. I mean, just ugly toward each other. That's not God. God said, have brotherly love, sisterly love towards your people. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Got y'all just in anger. That's another thing God said. God said, there's so much anger. When you start being mature in the spirit, you learn to calm your love self down and pray. Come on, somebody. Oh, hallelujah. I'm walking up in here, heavy up in here. You ain't got to say nothing. I feel it. Because that's another thing. It's so much preaching, not enough teaching, God says. Y'all love a good word because y'all like to hide. Oh, come on, somebody. Tell the truth. I mean, if I was up on here, y'all know I can get rowdy. Y'all be like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. She, oh, she, she tore it up. That ain't always what you need. That isn't always what you need, said the Lord. There are times that te- Jesus taught. He taught the disciples. He said, oh, ye of little faith. Where is your faith? That's why they couldn't cast out that demon. Can you cast out a demon? Can you pray? And really heal somebody? Can you lay hands? Do you know your word? Oh, come on, somebody. And lost half of you right there. Do you really study your word? And I'm not talking about getting on the phone and the app. I tried that. I don't like it. I I, got to touch that Bible. I'm telling you what God says. So that was the Bible study today. Um, I'm going to go deeper. I'm going to go deeper. So it ain't going to be a lot of hooping and hollering. Because one thing about God, God is a balanced God. God is a God of order. He will give you what you need. Liquid fast, that's not an easy fast. 
any fast without food is not an uh, easy fast. So the enemy is going to come at you. But also, I'm telling you what thus said the Lord. This fast is going to propel some of you into your destiny. This fast is going to bring blessings. This fast is going to break off bondages. So the devil don't like these type fasts. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm telling you, he don't. He don't like any kind of fast. Because guess what? The world is eating itself. Oh, I just said something. You eating yourself into a frenzy. Because truth be told, if you really get in that Bible, Jesus fasted all the time. Jesus prayed all the time because he knew what time it was. Do you do? Have you seen the signs of the times? Do you understand what's happening here? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So God bless you. God keep you. And, and you're right, Apostle. Dominique, yes, we have to have a clear understanding. You have to be clear to hear. You can't, you can't, if you are doing, all, let me tell you something. Every day you need to spend time with God. Just hear his voice. Hear his voice. He says the difference between meditation and prayer. Prayer is where you talk and meditation is when you're listening. God, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to do it? Where do you want me to go? Where you don't want me to go? See, that's another thing too. Most of you are lost over your life. You say you love Jesus. You say you love Jesus. You say you love Jesus. He said, well, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, obey my word. Oh, come on, somebody. All righty. So this is it. I pray that you have a blessed day. Continue to strong, be strong in the Lord. Remember, if you get weak or anything, you can have chicken broth, beef broth, um, smoothies. Um, you know, I, I, I learned a little secret, too. If you put some chicken bouillon in the chicken broth, it it tastes good. You know, um, that's if you get weak or whatever, green tea, remember stay away from acidic, uh, anything acidic drinking, um, water, you know, that's good. Um, you, you know what to do. You can do this. You, you got this. You got this. Um, continue to fast, continue to pray, walk in love, walk in love. Everything is love. Yeah. Be angry, but sin not and, and quit talking so much, you know, and I love to talk. Y'all know that. But I don't talk all the time. Y'all probably think so. You know, because preachers, you know, I used to. I ain't going to lie. And and I found out I talked too much. I was like, ooh, Lord. Yeah, sometimes you just need to be quiet and listen to God. Listen to the direction, instruction. That's how we grow. See, the world got everything moving fast, 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 fast. Because he don't want you to take time and listen to God. He don't want you to go the right way. The enemy is trying to take you out. And he's not playing, by the way. You might be playing, but he ain't playing. So God bless you. God keep you. Nakia Fox, God bless you too, honey. Have a blessed day as well. So y'all just stay. Milk, Um, I don't think about, I don't think you should do milk because milk causes mucus. And uh, if you do it, I would do almond milk, you know, um, something light because, yeah, it's kind of heavy. But, you know, speak to God. God will tell you how to do your fast. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, this is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Real life soldiers for that is who you are. Walk like it, talk like it, be like it. God bless.